we are still flooded with images. The images that capitalism has of itself, a series of never-ceasing electric pulses travelling at light speed across the globe, perhaps, and the images we have of our relation to it. We might regard ourselves as post-capitalist subjects, as citizens, as consumers, as neoliberalised individuals, or as members of collectives, communes and communities, as members of a religious or ethnic group, a political party, or as geographical beings, or even as members of a certain kind of internationalism, global humanism or cosmic wholeness. It matters a lot how we understand who we are, as an isolated body, as part of a collective body, as a depressed subject, as a worker, a carer. And it matters how we conceive of ourselves in relation to broader abstractions that we have no individual control over. Following BIFO, I am interested in ways of thinking about necro-capitalism that takes seriously the subjects and the suffering constructed by this kind of economy and fascist images of death. I am interested in an aesthetics that recognises the power of violent images and refuses to accept that all images are equal. We might be cynical, open to anything and everything, be worried about censorship, keep our safe search off, pride ourselves on our ability to watch graphic violence, to take the most violent scenes of murder, rape and torture. But if we lose the ability to differentiate between real violence and fictionalised violence, because we have watched too many films and played too many games, then we are easy prey for necro-capitalism. At the same time, by recognising our complicity in the production and reproduction of violent words and images, we can begin to think and work with care to undo the lust for pain that sustains fascism and necro-capitalism alike.